Okay, we're going to animate this NPC today, and it's going to be orthogonal walking, basically, with stopping at random times, and that will go after the fashion of this Final Fantasy VI style. So if you're trying to do that retro AI walk, this is a way to pretty closely duplicate it in Godot. So we're going to make this easier and use Godot's Navigation 2D ability. So first we need this polygon. This is a Navigation Region 2D, of course. Uh, you just draw that around wherever you want the boundaries to be. And then the character itself is a character body 2D with the sprite and the frames as necessary. If you need any further details on setting this stuff up and getting uh, basic animations on a 2D character, uh, check out the Overworld Character Controller tutorial. It's all covered there, so that way I'm not duplicating content too much here. Uh, animation player, I just have the basic walk down, left, right, and up. So like so. I made it slow, because that's kind of how they walk in the original game. Collision shape isn't really used here, but it's just part for completeness. And the navigation agent. So this is part of the setup that Godot shows you in their documentation. So what we're going to use here is, I'll put this link in the description as well. This is their 2D navigation overview. This is very helpful for basic setup. Down at the bottom, they give you a script, and this sets up the basics for that 2D navigation. So the way I start is just copy this script in here. You know, GD script if you're doing that, I use C sharp. And that is this file right here. One thing, if you're copying and pasting and you're using C sharp, don't forget to make sure that the name of the class right here is the same as the file name because that's a Godot gotcha. It won't work otherwise. Other than that, you can just copy and paste. And I've made some modifications to it. What this does is just gets the very basics in place. So what it'll do, it'll just go to this vector two immediately and then it'll stop. It doesn't have a functionality for deciding where you're going to try to walk to next. So I think the best way to show this is compare these two files and I'll go over the modifications I make to this file or additions rather. So in Visual Studio Code, comparing is really nice and simple. Just highlight one, hold control and highlight the other file, right click and then go to compare selected. Let's get this out of the way. And then you'll see a diff essentially between the two files. So on the left is the original one. So right here, I use system diagnostics for asserts and I think something for system, not too important. This is obviously just the naming difference. And these are the same variables. I just put different default values in here. So this path length, what that's going to do is we're going to get a random direction up, down, left, or right. And that's going to come as a vector two. So it's going to be like one, zero, or one, one, et cetera, et cetera. So the magnitude of the direction is always going to be just one. And we're going to multiply it by this path length. And that's going to determine how far the destination is. So if you imagine here, um, you know, if you just do one pixel or whatever that one is in units, rather, it's not going to go very far. So if I say pick 100 units, try and walk to here. If I pick 200 units, try and walk to here for each iteration. So that worked out for me to be I just the same value as the movement speed. That's just a coincidence. Animation player, of course, to get the animations that we're going to play when he walks in each direction. And then the pause functionality. So um, without adding something to pause at random times. He just keeps walking very continuously and it doesn't quite look right. You know, it never stops. So that, that's what these variables will hold. This is just going to determine, are we paused at this time? This is going to say, how long is a given pause going to last? And this is just going to track how long we have been paused for. And likelihood, this I'm setting to 20% and I'll show below how we do that with a random number generator. And that's going to be how likely at any given iteration he's likely to stop. So this right here, this movement target method, that's just setting these internal variables up at the top. And you notice here it's going to set the target position to whatever value you pass into it. So this is the method that actually changes the target that we're trying to get to. So if you didn't change the name of the Navigation Agent 2D, then this is not going to need to be changed. Uh, but just be careful if you do name it something different, this Navigation Agent. Again, we're on the character here, so it's just going to be an immediate child of it. That's why we use the get node here. And this just gets the animation player into that variable so we can call it later when we want to play or stop an animation. So if we see over here on the left, what we started with is it's just saying if navigation agent is navigation finished, return, meaning don't move. And that's why if you play it without adding anything, it's just going to move to one spot and then this is going to be the end of it. So this is where you need to set another destination. So if we've ended the first path, we've gotten to where we tried to get to, now we need to set another one if we want them to move again. So that's what's going on over here. So first we're going to handle the pause. I have that in the method below. That's right down here. So what that's going to do is just run if it's not pause. The exclamation point is negating in C sharp. Uh, we're going to get a new random number. This by default will be between 0 and 1. This is just a C sharp method. That's actually what I need the using system for at the top. 
And we're just saying if the random number is less than the pause likelihood, so this is 0.2. So between 0 and 1, if it's under 0.2, then we're going to set is pause to true, and we're going to stop an animation if we're already playing it. So then again here, if it's not paused, we're going to set a new movement target, a new destination for them to walk to. So again, keep in mind, this is the section of the code after we've reached a destination, so that's why it makes sense to put it here. So starting at the global position, which is where the character is at that very moment, we're going to add a random direction times the path length, and that's the variable I was talking about above right here. So again, however far you want that path to be from its current location, that's how you adjust that. And while we're in here, keep in mind the, these things like the path length and uh, you know how long they pause. You could also put those as random values between you know given bounds, and then make it even more random. But I'm not trying to do that here because I'm just trying to reproduce the retro look here. So this code right here, this is just if you're not at the end of a path. We're in physics process, of course. So basically, every frame we're going to move a little more towards the destination. That's this built-in method for the navigation mesh. I think normalize would be like if you're moving diagonally so you don't get the classic I go at a different speed if you're going diagonally by adding the vectors together. But this is all part of the template, so just to kind of understand it. And then we have this move and slide down here, which is just like the character controller defaults. It's going to handle all the movement from there. In the process method, I just handled the pause timer. So if we go back down to here um, and we set is paused, so this is true now when we go there. So this code is then going to run the paused time, which is that variable that's keeping track of how long we've been paused. We're going to add however much time has passed, which is the delta that gets fed in here. And then if the pause time is greater than or equal to that limit, we're going to unpause and reset that variable, of course. So with this pause set to false, when this code runs up here, now it'll do the movement again because we've set that variable. I think it's pretty clear what's different now, so I'm going to go over here so we don't have that green in the way here. So this get random direction and the animate direction, those are the key parts where he's walking. So same thing here, we're going to get a random value and then the next double. So again, this is by default between 0 and 1. So we can use it like a percentage that way. This is kind of a more recent C-sharp switch syntax. But what it's saying is if this R value, this random number, is between 0 and 0.25, the first quarter, essentially, we're going to set the direction to new vector 2, basically left on the x-axis and nothing on the y, and just so on and so forth through. So, you know, positive move to the right on the x-axis, moved uh, up on the y-axis, don't forget to flip the y-axis, and here move down on the y-axis. So obviously if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to be one of these with 25% chance of hitting any direction. So I'm going to come back to animate direction because that's just going to call this while we're here. Uh, this is returning a direction to the method up here. So remember here we're getting that random direction, so what this is going to return is one of those four vector 2 values. So this is going to just be x left or right or y up or down and then again we multiply by the path length to say how far we want to go left right up or down so the animate direction this is just to handle the animating in the correct direction whichever one we picked so same thing here is a switch statement this syntax is saying the direction variable in these brackets this is saying this property of the direction variable so it's a vector 2 we've got the x and the y so this is just taking the result up here and translating it into the walk left, right, down, and up animations, because these are the animation names. And if none of those is the case, which should never happen, uh, we return none. And this is where I use system diagnostics. So debug assert will throw a whole bunch of stuff if it's not true. And we don't want this ever to be true, because we know something's been done wrong in that case. So this is just to assert that the animation name doesn't come back none. We wanted it to pick one of these. And then the animation player just plays whichever one of these got picked and that'll coincide with the direction we're walking. And that's it, so let's show it off. So we'll just hit play scene. There we go. That looks awfully familiar. Bit of a long pause there, I guess. So yeah, like uh, there we go. And you can tweak those values and we can make it a little more random or less random, but this is what I was going for. So you have that classic motion if you were trying to implement that classic style in your game. Cool sauce. Thank you.